our uh, thoughts around if we have dental problems, for example, let's think about somebody that's listening to this podcast right now. Let's say they've got a bit of mild gum disease. They've got some fillings that have been going on. I think our, 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 our current belief system would be, well, we've eaten too much sugar. We've not brushed our teeth enough. But is what you're saying that actually... You could be brushing your teeth as much as you want and eating the healthiest diet in the world, but it actually could be the microbiome in your mouth that's impacting cavities in your teeth and, and gum disease. I mean, that's essentially the majority of us. Uh, it, it, globally, uh, certainly in the US, which you know is a very quote unquote civilized country with good health care, uh, over age 60, 70, I think it's 72% of us have gum disease. Of those 72, I would say 98% of them have had a cavity. When you're in your 40s, it's 53%. The majority of us have gum disease. This is a very prevalent disease. And most of my patients that are brushing and flossing, which is what we shame them into doing, still have these diseases. Obviously, brushing and flossing is an afterthought. It's a great uh, industry. Uh, it's a very lucrative industry uh, um, and has been for a long time. But that in itself is not seemingly we know is not doing the trick. I mean, I have couples come in and one spouse will have a lot of work and needed, needing a lot of work, a lot of cavities, a lot of gum disease, deep pockets, bleeding gums, and they are brushing and flossing like mad. And then the husband or the partner will, I will hear that from the partner in the chair. I mean, they do nothing. They don't floss and they come in and they have a perfect you know, uh, a, a dental visit. So it, it's more than that. It, it is diet, it's environment, it's uh, the humidity in the air, if you're mouth breathing. It's, um, it's not about flossing and brushing. In fact, that's number three on the list. Uh, it's about the oral microbiome. And, and again, this is something, oral microbiome came discovery, not discovery, but uh, uh, kind of attention to it came after the gut microbiome. And it still doesn't get enough attention because it is linked with all the other biomes, but it is about the oral microbiome, oral disease and other systemic diseases. It's not about brushing and flossing properly. It's, uh, and it's not necessarily seeing your dentist twice a year. It's about what you've got in your mouth. What's living, what's in the biofilm. What is the makeup of the bacteria? Are they doing their job properly? And I, I, what is amazing about that is I remember, uh, I don't know whether it was a national Ge geographic article, but I remember reading it a few years ago. And um, they were visiting a remote tribe in the middle of the Amazon jungle or somewhere. And they actually had like quite, a, I remember them talking about it because they had quite a high sugar diet because they were eating lots of fruit and, and, mm -hmm. and things like this. And there are these 80 year old elders in the, in the village with these Hollywood white mm -hmm. smiles. Right. Um, and even at that point, people are saying, well, ho hold on a minute. Like, Mm -hmm. these guys aren't brushing their teeth, yep. you know, and, no. and, and, and the same as you see with animals, right? You yep. know, you know, wolves in the wild aren't um, gargling mouthwash before they howl at night, but right. clean white teeth. And that's fascinating to me. And I kind of wonder whether you're saying brushing is kind of like third down on the list, but let's take somebody say you created like a, a, a probiotic formula right and if we if we took somebody uh, from from let's say childhood into an adult and the first person used uh you know blast it mouthwash full of chemicals and brush their teeth twice a day and the other one didn't do anything but maybe just had a probiotic mouthwash what do you think the difference would be as far as the state of their teeth when they got to adulthood? Well, they've actually done these studies. They're um, uh, concordant studies with twins. And, you know, twins have the same, they're genetic uh, copies of, each, of, of themselves, of each other. And there are a lot of commonalities. And, but how they express through their life, certain uh, symptoms, diseases, let's talk about cavities, uh, bleeding gums. Uh, one may have slightly different facial development. Uh, I mean, that's an environmental factor. So I went to school with two twins, identical twins, and I was able to tell them apart, even though they made great effort uh, for amusement's sake uh, to 
to, uh, they would literally switch positions and the professors would be fooled on, on the bench and in the clinic and all of that. But, uh, but one had a narrower face than the other. So there's that genetic blueprint, but then once you come into this planet, their face may be different and also their oral microbiomes may be different. And that's back to those studies. A lot of, a lot of teenagers that are identical, they're living in the same home. They're maybe consume, mostly consuming the same diet unless they have preferences when they're outside of the home. And, but they will have radically different uh, uh, de uh, dental reports. And one may have a few cavities that need to be fixed. The other one may not. There may be different uh, levels, degrees of gum disease and inflammation in the mouth. Uh, um, obviously, one may be brushing more and flossing uh, uh, more or less, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but back to that example that you, you mentioned, uh, there are a lot of great studies coming up now. Ironically, we're able to define, and, and this isn't available for the gut microbiome people, but we're able to define what our oral microbiomes were back in the, the Neolithic era, for example. I mean, pick any, any time you want, uh, but way, way back, thousands, ten thousands, before the agricultural revolution, afterwards, we can measure... And, and know what was in the mouth, what was in the oral microbiome by picking off calculus off of the skulls, off the teeth in the skulls that we dig up. And calculus, basically it's calcium, but in that calcium are these uh, petrified bacteria. That's probably not the right word. Um, and we can do a DNA analysis and, and know what that was. The scary part now is, is that we now know, based on analysis of the current oral microbiome compared to any of those dates back then, is that we've actually, not only has the oral microbiome changed radically, radically, dramatically, uh, as you would expect, but we've lost, completely lost, they've, they've become extinct, certain bacteria in our mouth. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that because our environment has changed? Absolutely. Have we evolved into a better kind of organism? Probably not, because our symptomology, our number of cavities, the, the incidence of disease has gone up since from that skull that we measured back in time. So, so, and not only are they beautiful white teeth, I mean, a lot of these uh, tribes are able to chew on raw sugar cane. Now that's not a uh, version of refined sugar, obviously, but I've actually been to Africa, to central Nigeria and uh, had made some comments and made some notes on how healthy patients were, depending on what was being consumed. And, you know, if they were in a village working and able to work at McDonald's, which we do have exported to Nigeria, unfortunately, um, th there's a slightly different story there. But the Africans in Nigeria, these are, these are the Yoruba tribe, uh, that are in small villages that may come into contact with... Uh, modern civilization, like a car loaded with, you know, uh, processed food is very infrequent, if, if not at all, uh, they are incredibly healthy, even in today's world. So, so we're, we're trying to frame the context of how important this oral microbiome, what role does it play? And each time, it doesn't matter how you look at it, uh, whatever study you want to look at, it, it always is the big player in terms of oral health.